to be honest, it's a sad story and it's something that has always been there, it's still happening. It's really sad and um, I know of a friend that was sexually harassed and I've also read stories about women that have you know, gone through that kind of um, experience. To be honest, I, I, I don't wish it for anyone. I don't wish it for myself. Neither do I wish it for my sibling. Basically, we had, we used to have teenagers, pastors and all. So then I was just, I think I, was, I should be like 14, 15. Yeah, I just finished secondary school. And where we call for your house? I don't know. The pastor will be like, can you come upstairs? When my wife is around, I was like, okay. First, it started with text messages. So at the point, the messages of organizing programs and choir hazards changed from that to something very personal. And I showed my other sister the first time, and she was like, no way. You know when like somebody comes on pulpit and performs miracles, preaches the Bible and all, and the next minute the person is telling you how you are your lips to look as a child. There was one that really made my skin crawl. I was supposed to like do a test. I went to the hospital first. So they said oh, and just to know like, just to know what this exact problem is. We're going to refer you to another hospital to get some tests done. So I went to this hospital. It's one hospital at, um, I can't remember, I think Antonio somewhere. There are, there are two male doctors. And then they tell me to take off my clothes and put on like there's this um, hospital whatever yeah so i put it on and then you know they asked me to lie down on the bed and then they bring out this <laughs> i don't even know and the one that wasn't going to be doing anything just stayed back like with the other one i was expecting at least i would be excused like you know giving some privacy even though it's not it's a not so private kind of test i was going to do for some reason i feel like nigerian women are not seen as human beings first of all because there's nothing to protect us we're not protected the second doctor he was watching the whole thing as everything was going on and then it now became like a show like the other one and this the doctor that was doing the actual test and then the um the other doctor that was beside him, it became like a whole shoe on my body. And you know, I was just like, I didn't even know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't like see anything because I needed to get this test done to get the results back to the referring hospital. And then, you know, I couldn't now say, oh, please stop this thing, you know, because they had to do the test. So they, they were just like, it was like they were playing with my body. That was exactly how it was. And, you know, I was just, my prayer was just like, you know, let it not just go like worse than what it already is. Let me just, you know, get out of this place, put on my clothes and just never return to this place. And you know, in no time, they were done. And you know, by, by time, every time I keep recalling that experience, I'm like, wait, like, what, what exactly happened in this uh, doctor's office? Like, what, was, what, was, that, was that supposed to be a test or like maybe some sort of guinea pig experiment on my body? Like, does it even make any sense? Okay, I think the first step is people speaking up and that has started already. So when you just have to let, I feel school authorities need to let these lecturers understand the fact that we are not just putting these policies on paper for people to read, it's actually a serious matter. So if you see, if they can make like maybe one or two of them scapegoats, like not just saying you're suspending them, you don't want to see them within the school premises, like take the job away from them. I think believe people when they tell you that they've been sexually assaulted that is like a basic first step don't try to make excuses don't ask them any dumb questions like what were you wearing or did you offer or whatever like yeah believe people it, lecturers are in a position of power over students automatically they should be held responsible for any actions that they take i feel like when you, when you when you are a victim or you find yourself in such a position, like holding back is not the right thing. It's good to speak up. So Nigerian men need to speak up for Nigerian women more. Nigerian men need to have the backs of Nigerian women. If Nigerian women are complaining, oh, I'm sexually harassed, I've been sexually abused, listen, 
fight for them in any way i mean nigeria you have you have sisters you have wives you have daughters you have mothers if it was one of your family members that was going through these things i'm sure you wouldn't you wouldn't feel you wouldn't feel good about it then be able to speak and you know let them be able to confide in you let them be able to say okay fine you know i'm going to fight for you whatever it is that is on your mind you can tell me and i'll have your back damn man imagine she was your daughter how would you feel how would you take up action would you speak for her would you fight for her would you protect her i mean yes we're strangers but it could happen to you i'm sure it could have happened to your sisters as well and probably your moms so if you don't take action now and speak up for us and and fight for us it will happen to your daughter again and her daughter and her daughter daughter and it will continue so you can sit down there and blame us and tell us what we wear and tell us that we're the ones seducing the lecturers instead of actually fighting the main problem you the men i feel like the men need they need we need like a seminar for men to talk about consent sexual harassment when yes is yes and when no is no and when no is not maybe and when no is not Oh, may, um, forceful maybe. No, no is no. Yes is yes. The truth is, we don't. We just don't want to talk about it anymore. We want actions. We can keep talking about this for years, and nothing will get done. So we want actions. We want people to put their foot down. We want people in power to stand up and say something or do something. Legislate laws. Do something. Stop talking about it, or stop just talking about it and do something if policemen are raping women we say we can't unsue policemen pastors now are now the ones that are sexually harassing women for goodness sake who do we now turn to like the people that are supposed to be like the head the people that you know we can actually see we can go to meet to like you know express our frustrations to the ones that are now taking advantage of us so who exactly do we have it means that we have each other so i'm saying that men nigerian men need to stand up for more for nigerian women i feel like the person should serve a jail term but it shouldn't just be in all those corp um, what is it called is it corporate jails or what they call it, it should be take the person should be taken to kiri kiri like for at least maybe 14 to 20 years if i have the power right now to do anything it's just chill them straight to make a public example of people especially people in power who do it and seem to get away with it and have all this institution protecting them i mean just chill time straight away minimum of 11 years maybe they'll learn something from past experience i know that most people that perpetrate this act there's nothing that can compare to the pain that they've you know inflicted on those ladies if I were to pass a law to say this is what their punishment would be like, they should just die or castrated.